terrifies me. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on the ACM's Fall Brazil program. We're really excited to have you all here today. I'm Julie Lucas, and I am the uh, Campus Outreach Coordinator here at the ACM. So I work with students who are interested in studying on our off-campus study programs. And today, I'm excited to introduce you all to our visiting faculty director, Sarah Houtzinger, and students Amatula Zaid, uh, Brianna Conwell, and Yu Xuan Fong. So they'll be talking a little bit about their program and their experience in Rio de Janeiro. And um, once they're done talking a little bit about life there, I will give you all next steps to take for those of you who might be interested in studying away on the fall 2018 program. Um, so I will let Sarah and the students take it away. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a, a, a welcome, to, uh, welcoming overcast day in Rio de Janeiro. We're actually up in one of our home away from homes, right? We have we have, since we have a, had a small group in this inaugural year of the ACM program in Rio de Janeiro. We actually have class in lots of different places, which has been wonderful, and this is one of them. Um, this is the penthouse of the coordinator, who is someone I'll introduce more fully in just a minute, but I wanted to give you the view out her, out her balcony, if, if possible, um, because from here, we're looking straight out at the Atlantic Ocean, and to your right would be Ipanema Beach, and to your left would be Copacabana Beach, which uh, often gets called the most, the most um, well-known, the most famous beach in, in the entire world. So um, we're happy to get to join you today from Rio. Um, let me go to our next slide. This is our dream team, um, as I fondly call them. And I call them that, first of all, because this has been a great combination of people. There's quite a lot of diversity in some ways, more than even the picture of us might show. There are actually many, many different genders and sexualities presented in our small group. Um, but it's interesting also to think about who we are in, in national terms, that we have um, uh, someone from Yemen, in uh, a Yemeni family in our group, Amatula. We have Yushan Fang from China. Um, to not with us today and not feeling well is uh, Jessica Ramos, who's right in the middle, who's uh, Mexican American, but, a Mex but spends a lot of time in Mexico. Um, and Becky Sanvos is also not feeling well today. Um, and and I, part of the reason I've called them the dream team is because First of all, every person has really been a, a, um, an active uh, contributor to one another's experience and us making it as a group. But also, since this is the inaugural year and a pioneering year, um, we actually would not be here if it weren't for every single one of us. We had just enough people to go this year, and we've laid, I think, a foundation for this program that we are very proud of and look forward to passing on to many more ACM students in the future. Um, so, just to introduce some people uh, a little bit more fully, Celia Pereira, the person whose uh, um, apartment we're in, and this is the, actually, this, this apartment building was built on the site of her family's home here in the Zona Sul do Rio de Janeiro. And she's a carioca, which means that someone, a, a Rio native, it can also actually mean someone who, who lives in Rio and um, identifies with being here. So there's a lot of discussion about be, how, how to be carioca. And, and sometimes, sometimes we even argue about if we want to be, since I um, uh, spend a lot of my time in the Northeast. But the reason that we introduced Celia first today is because she's a Colorado College um, graduate. And it, so in addition to being a uh, uh, um, uh, religion of native, she, after she graduated from, from Colorado College, she um, started an English school here in Rio, and she still um, teaches English widely across the city. And I sort of think of Celia, and I've heard others talking about her this way as, as um, Everything's a little bit more fun when Celia is here, and so we think of her as our, our specialist in convivencia, or um, 
really bringing a kind of warmth and being together, the idea of, of living together and being together into our group. Um, Sally is important because the model for this particular program is one where there's a rotating visiting director, my role this year. So I wanted to present Sally because she's the one person um, of, of the four of us. We hope that we're handing the baton on to other participants for the future, but Sally is the one person in this uh, um, webinar that will be here next year. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a lifelong student of Brazil, a Brazilianist by training. Um, I'm an anthropologist and I teach at Colorado College. Uh, from the very beginning of my training, my focus has been African diaspora in the Caribbean and Latin America. And so part of that came about um, because even after I'd been studying what it meant to be an Afro-descendant in um, the Caribbean and Latin America, I saw the martial art and dance form capoeira, uh, which is something that grew up amongst uh, on slave plantations here in uh, Brazil. And at the time, in the late 80s, really no one had heard of capoeira, and I fell utterly in love at first sight. I did a lot of dance and choreography and other kinds of martial arts before that. And so that's partially why I delved into um, working in Brazil and on Brazil some 30 years ago now. But I don't feel old, not me. Um, in addition to the work with capoeira, I've ended up focusing a lot of my work um, on gender-based violence and other forms of violence. And so my first book that I have a slide of is called Violence in the City of Women, about all women, uh, women's police stations that are staffed exclusively by women and take complaints only from women as a, as a more specialized way to confront violence against women here in Brazil. And then that's been part of a lot of my growth as a liberal arts professor, um, doing a lot of community-based learning, a lot of collaboration with local communities, trying to do a lot of place-based or field study. Um, that isn't treating communities as laboratories, but rather as collaborators. So a big focus on social justice and social um, inequality in that regard in various facets. And Brazil is a really interesting place to do that. Uh, I think it's, it's both very different and, and a very inviting uh, symmetrical comparison with the United States in so many ways by having the kind of ethnic and racial diversity that, uh, that only the two share by being shared superpowers of North and South America, respectively. And, and yet, very different histories, too. Um, we talk a lot about, about the coherence in Brazilian history and the fact that it wasn't born of a revolution, but a king handing the country to his son that he, he uh, um, crowned as em emperor, about the abolition of slavery not coming about through a civil war, but again, an agreement between a princess and, and a Congress, in effect. And, and so in some ways, um, that, that gets, sets the scaffolding for social structure very differently and culture very differently in Brazil. But again, very interesting comparison with the United States. Um, and that's something that will come up. I think it's been the focus mm -hmm. of, of our core class that we'll talk a little bit about, but I think that that's going to be central to, to this program, no matter who's directing it. But who is directing it? Let me tell you. Um, next year, we re recently got the great news that Molly McNichol from Luther College will be the visiting director for next year. And Molly um, will be able to answer questions uh, about what she's planning to to do for the core course and other pieces of the program uh, directly with students. But she has a strong background in restoration conservation biology, talks really compellingly about uh, the zeal she takes in having student, getting students out there, developing their own research questions, really making their study their own through problem-based learning. And she spent a great deal of time in Brazil, I understand. So I think she'll be a great match for this program as we hand it off to next year's folks. Mm -hmm. Hi. All right. <laughs> and now we're going to have the students introduce themselves and starting with Fong. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Yixuan Fong, and uh, I'm from Beijing, China. And I'm the junior of Colorado College and major in the anthropology and mathematics. And this year, um, 
I'm really grateful for being part of this team and especially like I carried out my own like independent studies in real like about the Pisha song which is kind of uh, a kind of like worded graffitis um, and um, and this kind of this kind of form of art appeared almost every corner in the city and i'm trying to explore the new citizenship behind the picture song and also the meaning of the street art movement yes yeah i'm learning a lot with Yishun's, uh independent study a uh, very creative way of narrowing in on a question in the, in the sense of only looking at the roll down doors of this kind of written graffiti that that, that um, she's thinking about his flexible space and, and, and especially the interaction with the merchant store owners. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a beautifully framed question. Thank you. All right. What's up next? Oh, oh, oh sweet Becky. Well, Becky's not here today. So um, Becky Cervos is a biology major at Colorado College and um, from outside of Boston, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, and is doing an independent study here in Brazil on um, the way that abortion, the, the, the fight for abortion rights, this is one of the Latin American um, countries where abortion is still illegal, except for in instances of rape or, inc or child molestation, or in danger to the mother's health. And there's, that's been a long fight of the feminist movement, but she's especially looking at what I like to fondly think of a, abortion rights in the time of Zika to play on the Gabriel Garcia Marquez title, if anyone recognizes that. But asking specifically how um, the epidemic of Zika, which we actually, for, for what it's worth, haven't really heard much about when you're, when you're in a city and they're like, it's, it's very small. Um, segment of the population and not particularly in this region, but it offers a real opportunity uh, um, for abortion rights in the sense that even Pope Francis has said that it wouldn't be quite the same kind of sin to consider terminating a, 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 um, a pregnancy in the sense that it might actually minimize mm -hmm. suffering, human suffering. And so uh, activists here in Brazil see this as a particular, um, particularly opportune moment. And that's what Becky's doing, working with feminist groups and medical students around how they understand that discourse and how feminism informs that discourse in particular. So Becky, sorry not to be with us. She did a road trip on this. We just are coming out of a four day uh, holiday and, and she did a road trip into the states of Minas Gerais and Sao Paulo to our um, west and south. And apparently they drove in the wrong direction for an hour or so today. So, so she didn't get back to join us. Oh, hello, that's me. Uh, Hello, uh, my name is Brianna Conwell. I am a junior at Colorado College and I'm an anthropology major. And um, I think one of the main things that attracted me to this program was the opportunity to do an independent research project. And so like Fong, I'm also doing one, but I'm doing mine on the LGBTQ culture in Rio and the people who make up that culture and how um, being queer or holding an LGBTQ identity, how that unfolds and how people live, exist, and perform those identities in Rio, especially given the narrative that Brazil is a very open and welcoming country for um, LGBTQ identifying people, but also along the same token has very high rates of queer violence and about learning how they identify themselves within um, the queer narrative. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, we didn't have Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, we we don't have Jesse with us today either. She's not feeling well. But does anyone want to? Why don't you introduce Jesse? Jess, 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 I love her. Um, Jess is a sophomore at, as well with me and Fong at Colorado mm -hmm. College. Um, and she is a psychology major, and she's not doing an independent project, but um, what she was gonna talk about was 
being staffed by the program, which I too am also staffed by the program. Oh, you're staffing the program. Yes, staffing the program, yes. Um, so what Jess does, she's the communications liaison, which basically means she writes blog posts about the program, like different themes within the program that we explore, um, like day-to-day -day life, different ideas of what a lot of people might find interesting specifically about this program, us being in Rio. Um, and she takes lots of pictures and we've all done interviews with her to where she's just like asked us questions about our experience and yeah. Yeah, maybe I should add um, the ACM makes, depending on the program, uh, opportunities to earn a fairly modest but I think enough money that it can make a difference mm -hmm. income by helping um, be staffers on the program. In our case, we have to uh, Jess as our communications liaison and Brianna as our administrative assistant. Um, so, so it's just something to know about. Well, another thing that um, Jess did, which was fun for me to see, is uh, she did a, a blog that was actually out of one of our writing assignments that, what did I call it? Um, your rants, <laughs> likes, or, or loves, uh, laugh out louds, and questions. Mm -hmm. and, and part of that was, it's important to say that, that there, were, there were three sort of fun things, things that you love about that you're, that you're learning about Rio and Brazil, things that just make you laugh, um, things that, you, that you're trying to figure out, the, 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 the likes, LOLs, and questions, but then also rants, and that was somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but the idea there was that sometimes uh, study abroad is almost treated in a sugar-coated way. As an anthropologist, I see this a lot with other cultures in general. You know, oh, I love other cultures, and sometimes how how deep culture is and how difficult crossing those boundaries uh, it gets a little bit smoothed over. And so this was an invitation to, in a three-to-one ratio, sort of appreciative, but also an invitation to really, really. Um, vent a little bit about things that are driving you crazy. And then, in all three cases, but especially with the rants, people had to relativize them. In other words, try to put them in a context and try to understand why they were that way. It, it wasn't at that point about liking or disliking them or right or wrong, but really just trying to understand the logic of how things work here and understand that even though in some ways, coming into a big city like this, it might not seem that different, that, that the cultural differences can be quite deep. Anyway, we still have to get to our, our next introduction, so along. <laughs> That's what I put in for you. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. So my name is Amatullah Zaid, and I am from Yemen, but I study at Luther College in Iowa, and I do nutrition and psychology, and I am, I'll be a junior um, next semester, basically. Um, the reason I chose to come to Brazil in the first place was because I have always just absolutely loved the culture. I love their music. I love their energy. And that was mainly from what I would see online or from Brazilian people that I would meet. I've never come to Brazil before. And so for that reason, I and it was the only really place that I felt that way about. So I decided to just come here and see how it really is. I wanted to see if it was just all something in my mind or if it, it actually had more reality to it. And honestly, since I have come here, I feel like this experience has met all my expectations, if not exceeding them, in the sense that I've always thought like I had uh, this type of uh, energy that I couldn't relate to with a lot of uh, people that I would meet. But here, I feel that it is the norm. It is the lifestyle that people have here. People are very open, very energetic. They love to dance. They love music. They love you know, to be outdoors by the sun, to laugh. And that was always things that I found in myself and for that reason i keep saying this and people sometimes uh, are surprised by it but i feel more at home here in rio than i have ever felt anywhere else and really are around you know all people here and just in general being here in rio has been one of uh, such an, a great experience for me because it made me get to know myself better and to know that there are a lot of people out there that are actually you know very similar to me, I am very thankful for being here. So, yeah. Thanks, so much, um, I remember so clearly when the, when we first were introducing ourselves, and we said, you know, tell us what, where you think of his home, and how much Willis said, I know this might sound strange because I just got here yesterday, but I I think I'm home now. 
and yeah. it's so it's been cool to see that get worn out hasn't it um okay we have um a series of uh ways we said we said often are sort of doing class on the on the move um but wanted to talk about some of the ways that we get out side of classrooms in, in ways that are linked both to the the uh, our, our host university that we call PUCI, but is the Pontificia Universidade Católica, or the Catholic University here in Rio. And, and, then, and then there's some of the field trips that are more just for our ACM part of it. Um, yeah, I think this is you, Fun. Tell us something about the city tour. No, 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 you no, no it's it's me, yeah. Um, I think the city tour, before talking about what we did there, I think it was a, a great way to actually meet other international students because it happened in the very beginning, in the first week. And it was, you know, all the students went there and I met so many people that I never saw afterwards. And if it wasn't because, because of our different schedules. So if it wasn't because of that trip, you wouldn't have met a lot of great people. But the trip in itself was amazing because we saw a lot of places in Rio that I don't know if I, I would have seen otherwise and we had as well someone telling us about all these places that we were passing by so we went um, to the Sugarloaf Mountain for example um, which you get on a cable car to get there and there's a picture um, from the Sugarloaf right there on the left. Um, we passed by the uh, by a forest, the Tujuka Forest, which is a, a very huge forest and it's very beautiful. Um, we passed by a few islands in a place called Baja de Tijuca. Um, we passed by uh, favelas, which are um, basically uh, communities where people, some people live here, but they're not necessarily um, it, what can I, how can I say, like supported by the government or informal construction, in, self construction? Yeah, yeah and uh, that was my first time seeing them. Um, yeah, I think it was it was overall a great opportunity to see many places and also the Mar Maracana Stadium, which is the stadium where the World Cup was held at. Mm -hmm. um, we went to churches, we went to great places that I'm really not sure if I would have seen otherwise just because because of um, the kind of activities I am doing here in Rio, which are mostly related to being um, around the ocean. So I am very, it was, I think it was a great experience and it was a great start for the whole um, semester. We had our first huge Brazilian buffet to oh, and yes. a Sambodromo <laughs> and an interesting sort of debate about if, uh, uh, if, if, if putting our faces through um, carnival costumes of a mulata was like blackface, um, as it might be called in the United States or not. So it was an interesting beginning, right? Yeah. Um, and then we went to Petropolis. Yes, this is my turn. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this is kind of our first of official, like, Field trip like for our own problem, and uh, we went to the city, the Petropolis. Um, it's kind of like two hours driving away from Rio, um, and uh, the city is can uh, we visit uh, one the most important destination for us is uh, uh, in prior. Uh, in prior palace, like it's the imperial kind of, summer palace, yeah. mm -hmm. it is the summer palace of the former empire, like Pedro II, and it's really beautiful and gorgeous. And then we also went to the cathedral of the Pedro Palace, and it's the home of one of the most important engineering, iron plant engineering home. It's um, his the Santos uh, Doma, and he is considered as the like the father of the first airplane in Brazil. Yeah, so it's a really beautiful city. And I know several of us are considered to going back to the city like after the first trip. Yeah. Yes, Brazilians love to educate Americans that Santos Dumont was the first in flight, not the right brothers. They're very certain about that. All right, um, I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in here, but um, one of the classes that we did on the move was to go to um, a very famous and historic uh, fancy coffee uh, house called Cafe Colombo, and it was a day that I was um, just did some brief dipping into um, 
some of the classic period or the uh, Bella Epoca, uh, when when Rio started to be considered a cidade maravilhosa, or the marvelous city. And in particular, this uh, cafe is known as the place that uh, um, Brazil's most famous writer, maybe Latin America's most famous writer, someone who's considered the Shakespeare of um, Portuguese literature, but as, as I think Brianna pointed out, uh, um, that, that shouldn't lead people to expect his writing to be inaccessible. The inimitable uh, Machado de Assis, we read a couple of uh, his short stories mm -hmm. about, um, really more about people, they're very psychological, um, but set in Rio de Janeiro, and then we went to the coffee house where he was known to sort of hold court and um, downtown and had class there that day. Anyone want to add anything about Cafe Colombo? I think if you end up coming to Rio, that this is definitely a place that you should visit because I think for me, it was the first place that I had gone to in Rio that really, like, I felt like the warm tingles of like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm just stepping foot inside this very historical place. And after we had done um, readings of a couple short stories, which I also recommend, read some short stories and then go to this cafe because you'll feel the tingly feeling of you're, you're sitting in history and you can almost feel like you're sitting next to like writers. And you, I felt like I was going back in time and I was surrounded by just a, a level of importance and wonder that I hadn't yet experienced. It was a very moving, warming experience. So I highly recommend it. I love the tingles. <laughs> it's a very pleasant tingle. Um, okay. Um, yes. So this trip, I uh, do not recall the name of the place they actually took us to. Um, was huh? His entry. His entry. It's His entry. His entry. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where we went. But um. His entry. His entry. Yes. It was the first. I think the first trip sponsored by Pookie to take international students on other than the city tour. Um, so the, they have the international student like center sent out this email and they were like, hey, we're gonna go to this resort place and we're gonna take you guys with us if you wanna go. And it had pools and restaurants and they fed us both, it was, I think it was breakfast and lunch. And it was it was the, the stereotypical style of Brazilian food where it's like a, a buffet of like feijoada and um, different types of Brazilian food. You just go and make your plate and it was really, really good. You'll love the food when you get here. Um, but it was just a day to relax and enjoy. We learned some history about the, it used to be a plantation, but now it's like a hotel resort type thing. And there are animals. We got to see lots of birds. I'm pretty sure there was an alpaca <laughs> um, and some horses. You could go horseback riding. They had a zip line, um, canoes. And I had plenty of hammocks. I'm in that one picture with the hammock. It was very comfortable. Um, and we were there for the majority of the day. It was a couple hour drive away. It was very nice and relaxing. And we got to interact with more international students. Like Amatula had said, like a lot of students you might not normally see based on your schedule. But like we'd all run into each other again and be like, oh, time to catch up and just hang out with people that you don't get to see. It was a very fun time. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to note that how um, both in the programming that Puki does, but also you see this in Brazilian society, they really do value having time to relax and enjoy life. Time, even it's a, a national law that uh, um, school children have to have an hour for lunch, for example. People take time to sit and have lunch with one another. Um, and we've seen that with some of Pookie's programming, even though I think at other times it's been, it's been very demanding too. So something to note about that. Um, I guess I'm gonna start doing this just since we, so we don't overtax you. Um, uh, as part of the course that uh, um, I'll talk about a little bit uh, when we get to the structure, we did our, our, our major field trip as a group. And, and I wanted to do something that really had some more educational content because it's really easy to go to beach towns on, on people's own time and people have done a fair amount of that. Um, for, we, had a, we had a unit in the class that was really about ec ecology or trans species, um, and, and so I was very lucky to discover um, the reserve of, of Guara, Guara, Guaracipe um, that is 
dedicated to the preservation of what remains of the vast uh, Mata Atlantica, or the big rainforest, uh, the Atlantic rainforest that actually rivaled the size originally. M much of it has been clear cut, but originally uh, the Amazon itself. And this particular reserve is a private nonprofit, but it's adjacent to three different um, public holdings, national and state parks. And what did we see there? We saw Capybara. <laughs> the largest road in, 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 in uh, Latin America, um, perhaps the world, and Jacare, and all kinds of birds, and, and caimans. Mm -hmm. In Cayman. And thank God we didn't see a puma. <laughs> we didn't. And, and um, we see, see everyone in the truck. We got taken on all kinds of hikes and just to, every time you thought you'd see the most uh, um, gorgeous waterfall on the entire planet, they took us to another one. And so that, that little pool that we're bathing in down below was just one of many. It was, it was a little bit the cliche of tropical paradise, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything to add about it? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, it was just a beautiful experience. Even though here in Rio, we're always, I feel like I'm always surrounded by nature around me. That was just a very rejuvenating experience, I would say. It's completely cleared my mind. And it was so beautiful to be just around nature and to just really connect with nature again after being in cities and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think kind of similar, but also different to Amatula's point. Being in Rio, I, I come from like a very rural city in South Carolina, so I'm used to, to being surrounded by less people and more nature. So coming into Rio, I felt like I didn't have much nature to be around. And I think the Hegua trip was probably the, the one thing that I've done in Rio that I wasn't super enthused about in the very beginning because I was like, that's a whole lot of nature. Mm -hmm. um, but we went and I felt so alive and so happy because I, I was challenging myself to like go on hikes and go like throw yourself into this situation. And I think we, I think we all can say that the, the trip itself was probably one of the things that we've most enjoyed about this whole mm -hmm. entire semester. I know I'm speaking for myself and I can speak for Jess too, because we talk about this trip all the time mm -hmm. about how we feel like it was the one experience that we have that we can think back on that changed our whole perception of what the semester was hmm. and how it's something that we look back on with only like happiness mm -hmm. and fond memories. Yeah. Well, so we haven't talked much yet. Oh, and I just threw this in because the food <laughs> here is fabulous. Um, Amatula is on the lower right. Um, at a, a lovely uh, reception that we had for all of our homestay hosts and then some street scenes of, of food. Uh, Brazilians are rightly uh, very proud of their many different regional cuisines um, and they're all present here in Rio including lots of great Japanese food and Italian food and American food, go figure. So, uh, one thing can I mention. go ahead. Yes, one I'm thing sure. you have to all try if you come here is acai. <laughs> acai is the one thing I cannot imagine living without anymore, you know, in the future. <laughs> and it's basically, it is a uh, berry from the Amazon that they blend with, uh, they freeze it and then they blend it with guarana, which is another fruit because it's sweet and the berry is not very sweet and you just they just sell it basically everywhere and you have acai you can mix banana to it or granola it's so delicious and it gives you so much energy it is fairly healthy depending on how much guarana they add but it is it is one thing that ha i have been eating almost every day and i honestly cannot imagine you know um not be being without it in the future but you all definitely should try it if you're here yeah, don't even get us started about food. We yeah, go yeah, we've been going for a while. <laughs> um, let me just say something briefly about the structure of the program, and all of this, of course, is available on the website as well. But this, uh, um, the students in this program all take Portuguese, and in uh, well, and, and and we'll let people talk about that. Everyone takes a core course that the visiting director teaches. In um, this semester's case, I designed a course that 
brought together some pieces of my own teaching, but also really tr was trying to take advantage of this particular moment in Rio's history when it had just hosted um, the Olympic Games mm -hmm. and the World Cup before that. And so thinking of this as sort of these uh, important transnational moments in which Brazil is performing itself on, a, on an international stage. Um, and Brazil, and particularly Rio, is very is all about performing itself on a stage. So really, we sort of started ask, asking how they how they presented themselves, uh, did an analysis of the opening ceremonies of the uh, the Olympics. Um, but the trans prefix was a little bit of a trope, a little bit playful. But it was also a way to to go into other things. I teach a lot about gender, so we did a short unit on transgender categories in Brazil, and travestis being one of those, um, trans species, the way that humans are, are relate to being part of an interdependent web of life was that which underlay our trip to Hegua, the nature reserve. Um, Transtornos um, and transformation. Transtornos is sort of about conflict and struggle. Transformation, um, looking for 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 how Brazil will confront um, the ongoing legacy of inequality along class and racial and gendered lines, and um, some of the effects of that that we're seeing now, like, like endemic violence in urban settings, for example. Mm -hmm. Any other transes that we're not thinking of right off the top? Anyway, that's been the core course. And, and then the students will be developing their own trans angle into their final essay for the class. Um, in this program, uh, they talk about Brazil. There's a there's a, a cliche out there, a saying: Brazil is not for beginners. And yet, this program is uh, really designed, I think, in in a very intelligent way, to allow someone who might not have any Portuguese or any real history with Brazilian culture um, to be able to step in. We try to provide you know enough support to to do that but also um, really allow the, in, the independence that young adults um, need and use so very well. And, and so the core course is, is the cradle for that. Students can also take independent studies. And as we said, um, um, over half of these students are doing an independent study. Everyone takes Portuguese, and people will talk about that. And then depending on whether they're doing independent study or not, people take one or two. Um, course elective. So, um, Matilda, do you want to say something about your Portuguese class? Yeah. Um, um, before coming here, basically, I, I spoke a little bit of Spanish, and I thought that that was going to help me a lot, but honestly, it did not. I, when I got here, I felt like I just had to completely switch off from, from Spanish because it, because it was just confusing my Portuguese. But I found that the Portuguese class has been more helpful than other ways that I thought would have been helpful, like dueling or listening to music and so on. These have not helped me as much as <laughs> The class really and I think it's because the professor um, first of all like we talk about very relevant topics um, things that we would use in our you know daily lives and so on and there was one topic which um, students were not expecting to get you know uh, you know in class but it was about how to order different drinks and so on and um, but it is something that you know a lot of students use all the time so it is good to <laughs> Um, have your vocabulary there so you can use it on your daily life and really improve your Portuguese. Um, yeah, I think that the class is also uh, really good because it teaches you the classic Portuguese basically, but the professor also usually mentions mentions the slang terms that people use here because in Rio a lot of people don't use the Portuguese that we necessarily, you know, that you would read in books or, or Learn in class, a lot of slang is used, and so it's, the class is really good to teach you both things and to help you differentiate between them and to use both of them. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a really good class. It's great because when I came here, I was not able to understand anything, but now I understand a lot of what people say so if they don't speak fast. People here speak really fast. So um, so yeah, I, I like the class, and yeah, it's a good experience. It happened that this year, um, the only person who wasn't in Portuguese one was um, Jessica, who's a native Spanish speaker. And, and I think that my Spanish did help me learn Portuguese, but it is also important. They're really, they're different languages and you are starting over with a brand new romance language. But anyway, um, and, and Jesse had already studied some uh, uh, Portuguese at 
Colorado College, and so she, uh, she's been in Portuguese three, and, and that's been and, and and it's really served her her accelerated um, work with the language. Uh, two other electives we're going to have folks talk about. Yes, um, yes, and uh, four of us takes the Brazilian history class, like in Puki. And that one is kind of just a design for the international students, since most of our classmates are the international students. Um, and it's taught by English, taught in English, so it's kind of easy for us to catch up a little bit. Um, and basically, we are trying to learn is like the history of the Brazil after the abolition of the slavery is happening in the 1888. So like we basically cover uh, a lot of like huge things like in Brazilian history, like the um, Vargas period and also the um, national developments like happened in Brazil and later the military rules and democracy in the 20th centuries. Mm -hmm. And then we also like um, our professor trying to um, let us to pick up the questions or the topics like we are interested in and to say how could we understand the Brazilian history, especially right now, like we, a lot of students will like talk about the Olympics and also the corruptions, um, the education policies happen like recently, like debating a lot within the society. So it's also like gives us the opportunity to like show what we know about the um, Brazilian society right now. Yeah, and so as the one person who is not in Brazilian history, because it's a 9 a.m. class, and that's just too much, um, I am in Brazilian social debates. Well, we're all in social debates. Um, but it's a sociology class taught by Puki, and it's another one of those classes, classes that's taught in English. Um, and it's uh, what we've done in the class mostly is taken different ideas around Brazilian culture, and our professor is kind of broken them down through a sociological framework and we've gone through and debated different topics within those frameworks um we just did like an actual sit down division debate on the ideas of using affirmative action in brazilian universities because that's something that's still talked about widely in brazil right now we've also talked about um domestic violence and outside violence and how those two can kind of overlap but are also separate issues We've talked about um, the idea of the racial democracy and whether or not that's something that modern Brazilians actually identify with or how that scene could be different and comparative to the um, like the United States idea of what racism might be and how racism is perpetuated in Brazil and in the United States. Um, yeah, it's been very a very interesting course. Um, and these electives are, are drawn from, um, there's usually around 20 offerings um, that on the books, not all of which are necessarily offered in a, a specific semester of a subcurriculum taught in English. And so people are uh, um, both using Portuguese a lot in their day-to-day -day lives and studying Portuguese, but being able to really delve into a content area in, in their native language, or there's actually quite a lot of international students for whom English is a, a second, third, or fourth language, but, but a pretty um, impressive sub-curriculum at Puki in English. Oh, we should go back. Um, well, Becky's not here right now, but these are just, uh, we wanted to say something about our, our home stay situations. We've had uh, five different settings that have been really varied from uh, more palatial to, to quite humble, uh, sharing a very small apartment, families with um, more adult children. I don't think we have um, families with younger children probably because we're sort of in the, in the central city and it's very expensive to live. Um, anything you all would want to add about, about homestays? I'm looking at our time and we probably want to take questions. So. Um. Just the idea, I would say that before coming here, a lot of people were saying that it's much better to get apartments and live with other students rather than get homestays because their experiences were not good and so on. I'm not even sure what programs those were, but I completely disagree agree with that. I came here with a little fear of how it's going to turn out, but it has been the, one of the most rewarding parts of this experience. The family has been great to me. The relationship has been amazing, and I learned so much from them, and they have always been helpful. And 
really trying to you know provide us with the best experience we can have and so i highly recommend that you all apply for the homestays it is it's a wonderful experience mm -hmm. ah, oh yeah this is my obsession uh, so, yeah so basically like the trans public transportation in rio is really amazing um and especially like there are so many one-way roads in this city like almost all the roads yeah um but uh, like most of us like living in the Copacabana, it's kind of like middle upper class area. Um, so like for us, if we want to like going around this city, the most efficient way and the cheapest way is like to uh, go get on a bus and just uh, travel, travel around. And you can experience a lot of different communities within this city. And also like it's also the subway and the bus is also our main transportation like to Pookie and back to our home most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, in addition to subways and buses, there are taxis and Ubers and we've all been on Bolognese on either gondolas or rail uh, rail. There's a train that goes up Santa Teresa, and then there's an integrated little monorail system too. So there are quite a lot of different ways that public transportation is available. Oh. oh yeah. So here in Brazil, I've been able to bring a childhood dream of mine to reality, and that is to learn how to surf. And that's the picture of me off her left yeah, uh, last week. Yeah. And um, this place is great for people who love generally outdoor uh, or just being active in general. People are always, you know, you would find people always in the beach doing pull-ups or having workout classes or playing volleyball, foot volley. Um, there's so many trails everywhere. Puki, as a matter of fact, every Sunday in the morning, uh, various staff from Puki would take students on different hikes to the forest, and it and the views are very beautiful. So I think this place is amazing for all for so many different sports that one would want to um, practice. And you know, uh, every Sunday by the uh, by the beach, the roads will be crossed and. Mm -hmm. Because because everyone basically from the whole city usually goes to the mm -hmm. beach on the during the weekends, and so we would always see people there skateboarding, rollerblading, you know, longboarding, running, and this is yeah, it, it, this experience has been great in terms of uh, the uh, being active and being outdoors. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So in our own free time with a lot of the holidays days um the university and like the program itself have been like very open for us to do traveling around brazil or even outside of brazil um i know that a lot of friends of mine have gone to areas like buzios or um sao paulo um these pictures specifically are from mine and jess's recent trip that we just got back from to um salvador bahia which was a really good experience a lot different than the setup of rio but um i think that something that we've been understanding of especially within this program is understanding like the culture itself within brazil might not be the same from one state to the other or from one city to the other and exploring that and really understanding the multifaceted layers of brazilian identity so going out to different places and learning about how life works there has been really interesting um if you come to brazil i think you should Go, go as many places as you can and learn as much as you can because it's it's really opportunities that you're not really going to get anywhere else mm -hmm. and Bay is a wonderful place and it made me um i felt like the ocean hasn't lost her magic now and it, that really warmed my heart and so i i'm coming back feeling a little more alive than i did before which is cool all right um Who would like to share something about what, what the value? I think you all have already said some things about, about what uh, um, this has meant to you, what the value is for you in terms of your future development, et cetera. Um, what would people like to add to that? Um, I think for me, uh, as I said, come, uh, you know, in the beginning I came here because I absolutely love the culture and I would like to learn more about Brazilian culture and about its history and so on. But one thing I did not expect was that this was going to help me have a clearer vision of how I want my life to turn out and where I want my career to go. 
And so being here, being around, there's so many artistic and active people. And it made me realize that I can actually start pursuing the dream that I had when I was young, which is starting to make films and photography and so on. And so many people here would make, you know, surf movies and just travel and kind of document these. And that was something I always dreamt of doing, but I just never thought, I've never had um, kind of uh, that uh, sort of community around me because I, I had always lived in uh, big cities where that was not necessarily the case. And so this has really uh, gave me, um, kind of brought to my mind the idea that I can actually start following that um, dream of mine and kind of uh, nurture it and so on. And so now I'm trying to, you know, online improve my photography and filmmaking skills. This is something I wasn't expecting, but I'm glad that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Brianna, do you want to say something? Um, yeah, I think something that really drew me to this program in particular, other than like the independent study and working it with anthropology and stuff, was that I've never been out of the United States, and I really wanted to challenge myself in a way that I found interesting, but also in a way that I found terrifying. And so I wanted to push myself. And I think that maybe I haven't had like an Amatula moment of like like having like a passion and learning about it, but I do feel like I've learned a lot about myself. And I, I I'm I'm an introvert by nature, and I'm very shy, and like I, I I'm meticulous about planning things, but I feel like Brazil has challenged all of those notions for me. And, you know, sometimes maybe things don't go completely to plan, but I feel like Brazilians take that in stride and that's not something I've ever really done. And I'm trying to learn how to do that. And I feel like this is the one setting in my whole life that has promoted that. And I feel like that's given me a sense of growth and a sense of realizing things about myself and really pushing myself to be my own person and to go out and do the things I want to do and to take all of those moments in stride and to learn that I can be successful on my own, which I hadn't ever really done before. And so I, mean, I did it in college, but like when you're on a college campus, it doesn't feel the same as like when you're in a foreign country, just existing and trying to survive and then learning that you're actually doing it really well or well enough mm -hmm. and just treating yourself with that kindness and learning how to just exist kindly in the world. And I feel like Brazil has promoted that a lot for me. So I'm really thankful for that. Uh, yeah, maybe just at one point I want to add it. It's kind of like, I gradually have a like sense of being part of like global citizens mm -hmm. since it's kind of like for Brazil, it's the culture I totally am familiar with. So it's, uh, but for here, like being here, this experience made me like much more trying to relativize the, all the cultural difference I suffered and also like trying to understand others' culture from the, from the shoes of them, like <coughs> especially like how to understand the, like, my friends and my host of families, like all their conversations and all their like lifestyles. So it's really helpful to some extent from this part. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Interesting. Well, um, coming to a close, uh, this is actually a sunrise. So looking forward to really laying a foundation for, as I said earlier, future ACM students to come here and find their own experiences here in Rio and their own learning, um, uh, high quality, high impact learning experiences. Um, let's see. Julie, did you want to come in on, on next steps? Yes. So first of all, thank you so much for sharing your experience with all of us. It's really great to get that on-site perspective. Um, and for any of you who have had questions up until now, you can feel free to just write those out in the chat box and we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Um, and I just want to give some information about next steps to take for those of you who might be interested in applying. So we really recommend that you talk with the people on your campus about your plans to study away, and just kind of how you can see, you know, the Brazil program or one of our off-campus programs as part of your college experience. Um, so we recommend you talk with the financial aid office, your academic advisor, and the off-campus study office. And also, it's a great idea to just kind of peruse our website, look at stories from past students, look at past projects, look at different classes or electives you can take just so you can get a better idea of the program. 
And then if you create an account on our website, um, then Katie Rose, the other campus outreach coordinator, or myself will be reaching out to you and we can answer any questions you have about the program or the application process as well. And my email is right there on the screen. Um, and then as far as application deadlines for the fall 2018 program, our deadline is March 15th here at the ACM. But I know a lot of colleges have an internal deadline that is a little bit earlier, so that's why we recommend going to your off-campus study office to find out when exactly that is, or you could just talk with Katie Rose and myself. So I think that is all for us today, and I think we're just gonna now open it up to questions. So let's see what we have. Okay, so we have a question for the students who are on, um, kind of about your experience in Puki Rio versus your experience at college at home. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess the most uh, different differences between like our college, the Corolla College, and the Pukis can of like CC runs the uh, block plans, which is like we took one class within three and a half weeks. So during that time, we only focus on one specific class. So, but here is around the basic like the semester plan. So it's it for both of us are the totally different experience to having like the real like uh, semester plans. Like you taking one class for the whole time. So it's kind of a little bit different for yeah. Quite. Yeah. Do you want to say something about your? Um, probably I would say to be honest that classes here are. And I, would, and I would say perhaps they, it is because they are di directed towards foreigner students and so many come from different backgrounds. They are easier than I found in Luther College, but you still learn a lot and they are still challenging in some ways. So I, I think I enjoy it both here and at Luther. So, Great. Yeah. Thanks. And then we also have another question also for the students about advice for prospective students or who, for students who want to go on the Brazil program? What you wish you had known before? <laughs> More Portuguese. <laughs> More Portuguese. <laughs> More Portuguese. Yeah. Yes. I would actually, yeah, I would actually recommend that you spend some time, for example, on Duolingo or something. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to spend a little time, but when I came here, I realized that it would have been better if I actually tried you know, in my summer and my free time to spend more time learning a little yeah. bit of Portuguese would have yeah. been more helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think another thing that like advice wise is knowing that like you're going to come out here and I think my first like couple weeks I just felt a little overwhelmed. Um, but I know that like my instructor here personally like is there as a support system for me, but also the staff of the ACM has been very, very helpful. And I, I came into this thinking that I couldn't like go to them for help, but um, I got two bad bouts of tonsillitis, one right after the other, after getting into Brazil. And everyone at the ACM has been more than helpful with anything that I needed. And a lot of the professors here are also very helpful. Like if you're sick or something, or you don't understand something, they're very open to talking to you about it. So like, if you come to this program, know that like you're not just being thrown to the wolves. I think the ACM has set up this program very specifically to make sure that you have that support system and you know that it's there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people say that they're support systems, but people like take that with a grain of salt and they're like, hmm, you know, maybe, but I, I don't know, should I ask for help? But I think that this program is set up in a way that there are support systems all around you and that they're really there for you. And I think that that was something I wish I might have taken advantage of before I did so. But I, I feel like that might have made my transition a little smoother. Yeah. Thank I you. <clears throat> well, it looks like but those yeah. are all of our. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to say like maybe prepare something for Carnival, especially for the spring semester. Yeah, it will be. It, it will be a big event. Yeah. Well, right now that our program is only running this semester, okay. it's not running in our in okay. North America spring semester. Okay. But who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Well, great. I think that is all of our questions for now, actually. But thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. It's been great to hear from you and talk with you all soon. Yeah. Thank you, too. And I did want to close by not only um, 
reminding you that Julie is a good point of contact with the ACM, but also I know that um, Professor McNichol at Luther would be happy to hear from people. I also welcome inquiries. And then the last email there, of course, is Celia Ferreira da Silva, um, your local coordinator, <coughs> who in some way, ways has has the, the deepest bicultural um, intimacy with Rio de Janeiro as a place and is a person that would be interesting to get to know if you're planning on um, spending the semester here next year. And I hope you do. You won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, Julie, and everyone for joining us. Yes, feel free to reach out to any of us. We're happy to chat and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You, yeah, too. you too. Bye. Bye now.